Am I in the show? Okay. Hey, hey, look at you. <laughs> look at you, TJ Shanoff, holding this up. This is a... all I'm talking about tonight. My sealed, unopened <laughs> copy with a hole punch in it of Ringo's Bad Boy. This is worth at least 99 cents. <laughs> is there a sticker? What's that sticker on there say? What uh, is that? Is there a sticker? It's a hype sticker, son. And it I reads, love it. contains songs from the hit television special Ringo. There was a television special called Ringo. I think Hit is asking a lot. There we go. Close up <laughs> on this. There we go. Wow, beautiful. Well, it, that's an, another Untitled Beatles podcast exclusive. Uh, a sealed bad boy. Holy, holy cow! It's like Dude, a Billy. From that. It's like a Billy Ripkin fuckface card right out of the pack. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what that was until you mentioned it a few episodes ago, and I, I got I, I one. A deep dive, really? I got one out of the pack, and whatever that was, eighty nine or ninety, I forget which year, and uh, it was a Fleer. Yeah, man, I used to collect Topps, Donner's, Fleer, and for a, a moment, score baseball cards. You know, during the great baseball card boom. <gasps> That's, Welcome to the back when they were making so many that it negated the value of every baseball card. Exactly from like eighty eight on. Yeah, I was like, oh, I'm going to retire with this Billy Ripken fuckface card. It, it, basically, it's a bat, Billy Ripken from the Baltimore Orioles, Cal Ripken's brother, Cal Ripken Sr.'s son, uh, is holding a bat, and he wrote fuckface on it, on the knob of the bat, <laughs> and it passed by all the people at Fleer and got on into the market for like a couple months, and I got one in a pack. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, before we get into the Beatles, Cal Ripken yes. has the most overrated stat in the history of baseball. You oh. showed up for work. Come on, guy. <laughs> Remember that hot take circa 98 or whatever? <laughs> right. Yeah. Because he like never missed a game and like for whatever it was, 15 years, whatever it was. Right. Yeah. Most consecutive uh, complete games or whatever. Right. Or something Amen. like that. All those steroids. Anyway, welcome to the Untitled <laughs> Beatles podcast presents Twitch and Shout. I'm TJ Shanoff. And I'm Tony Mendoza. Look at us. Here we are in video. You get to see what we look like. Wow. Yeah, this... <laughs> we have any we, well, we have producer Casey. So we have some comments, producer Casey. First, let's bring him to the screen. Hi, producer Casey. Hey there. Thanks for having me. I should me. have told you first. Hi, Casey. Having, are you're we producing the, the fucking show. Are we you. the first people to make the joke? We've got faces made for podcasts. Oh, oh. yeah, has that been done? I think so. We, yeah, why not? <laughs> let's let's uh, yeah, let's christen that. We did there it. We, go. we did it. There's a boat named after us. Set sail. Oh, uh, we've got the audience, and this is great. Thanks, audience, for joining us. Obviously, this is our sort of first three person endeavor. So we're learning how to do the live streamy stuff and we're excited to get your comments. Cloud party music weighing in on Cal Ripken. Yeah. My favorite line from one of my other favorite bands quote, the pain you cause me, babe would make Cal Ripken call in sick. Who? Yeah. I don't know. I'm not familiar with that. Who is that? Is that the I'm strawberries? Gonna, I'm gonna have to go look it up. <laughs> I think it's the raspberries. <laughs> or is Eric it Larry Norman. Raspberry from uh, <laughs> the Gentries who had that hit? Great hit. Uh, come on, keep on dancing. Yeah. Well, <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And they Mary were from Prankster, Memphis. All right. Mary Prankster is the band. They were from Baltimore. Baltimore, great town. The Wire. Who's your favorite Wire character, TJ? All right. Uh, oh my God, I'm forgetting. Especially as I've seen the show, I don't remember. Uh, I, I, bubbles or uh, are you a, like a yeah, McNulty yes. guy? Oh. Do you like him? 
I, I like Nick Nolte. I, I like. <laughs> Nick, Nick, by the way, a movie that should be canceled. If you catch Forty Eight Hours, Nick Nolte drops the N word a couple of times. Like, is that right? Yes, that's nineteen eighty two. I think. Like, come on. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, that's. Well, and uh, hmm, okay, I haven't. How do you come back the, from that? <laughs> yeah, is that the one with Eddie Murphy? Is that is that what I'm that Forty Eight Hours right? Where, yeah, where they were partners or whatever. All hmm. right. Oh, with Eddie well. Murphy as the money. As Eddie Money. <laughs> shh, 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 shaking. <laughs> well, <laughs> we have a lot uh, to okay. talk about tonight. We do it's have, yeah. It is, yeah. It's Get Back Week, man. I am stoked. I am so stoked. Look at you. You got your Let It Be cassette tape. I had that too. That was the fir- Actually, that was the first way I experienced Let It Be was on cassette. And my mom here, I, I brought the, the, the vinyl book that my mom had. She always carried it upside down. That's why I do that. But, uh, yeah, so this is like the British version that came out, uh, the original release. And this thing is in horrible shape, but, uh, I was a curious kid and, and yes. And then it comes in this, you know, look at this thing's in terrible shape, but there's a book. I was talking about this on the podcast the other day. With regards to fifty two pickup, because the the binding is all messed up on it, but you know it's a great book, and you've got uh, yeah all sorts of <laughs> well, there's little Heather on <laughs> there's little Heather McCartney, Heather who yeah. gets I think Heather's about the the sixth or seventh most seen in the Let It Be movie, right? Heather from the middle of the movie, Heather's in it all the time. Yeah, in fact, she should be on Dig It. Like she's in like the first like seven minutes of Dig It, like. Uh, and a lot of people thought it was Yoko, but yeah, there's just so much, this is, it's a really good book. And then all this text too, this is the text I was talking about where I was like, I have no idea what they're talking about. Um, let it be, get back. It's uh, the premiere week, Tony, not since the anthology that's 1995. <laughs> also yeah, Thanksgiving man. weekend, not, or the weekend just before Thanksgiving. I think it was a Sunday before Thanksgiving. when it premiered on a Beatles C. Yeah. I am so I've, I've tried to explain to my beautiful wife, Carrie right. mentioned her on the show a bunch of times, your beautiful wife, Lauren. I'm not sure if she feels the same way, but Carrie's like, oh, it's Thanksgiving weekend. I'm not <laughs> I, I play I play organ at a theater in Chicago most weekends. I took the weekend off, but we'll be doing watching get back every day and then doing it on Twitch, giving our instant reactions at nine o'clock central Thursday, Friday and Saturday night. I'm it, it's it is Christmas Hanukkah, the Super Bowl all rolled into one. It's so fucking great. It's so great. And and our impending divorces because of this. So I can't wait. Yes. Uh, it, <laughs> she go. It, it's they are so happy that we are choosing to spend family time. <laughs> no, that my she's all right. Uh, I'm happy to do this. You're right, though. You're right. Like, when was the last time something of this magnitude, Beatle wise, came came this way? I don't think since anthology. You could say the Ron Howard thing, eight days a week, a couple years back. There's definitely been Beatle things. The re-release of all the records in t- 2009, and then the nine nine oh nine. Yeah, right. Those are all great things, but nothing like this is going to be a, m- mostly like unseen stuff. This is. Whatever they had, like fifty-two hours of footage, we we only really got like an hour and a half of it. We we've seen between the original "Let It Be," uh, out of print, hard to find, <laughs> impossible to view now on YouTube, etc. Movie, and then whatever they gave us some extra stuff too in the anthology uh, DVDs and stuff too. But and other than that, a yeah. couple of remixes when they did the Beatles one DVD a couple of years ago. Oh, that right. has strangely edited versions of Let It Be and Long and Winding Road that have some different camera shots from the film as well. So, I mean, look, th- let's start off by saying, and I think I am so excited for what's going to be almost eight hours, supposed to be six. Now mm. they say it's going to be almost eight hours over three nights. I really hope, and if you've heard the Untitled Beatles podcast, you've heard me say this refrain before. You can't let the Michael Lindsay hog, let it be film drift into obscurity. Some would argue it already has having not been seen yeah. on, on home video since the eighties, never streaming, never on cable, right. but watching it again in anticipation of this for the first time in, in several years, uh, it's flawed. It's dark. It's a little sad, but it's vital. It's part of their core film catalog. <laughs> hey, you know what? Some of us are old as fuck. 
we can swear on Twitch, right? OAF. <laughs> <laughs> That's in reference to a comment from Bert Chide, 74, who claims uh, they were only three for the anthology premiere. That, was what's was, this? What's the 74, 74 about? I was born in 74. <laughs> I think I was 21. <laughs> Yeah, I was 20 because I'm, you know, as you know, I'm a year younger than you, TJ. So yeah, I was junior. A... <laughs> Heard that. <laughs> Want to smoke after school? Psych. <laughs> Adelic? Psych. I always thought that was the worst thing. Psych. Okay. <laughs> See you later. Um, yeah, man. Uh, oh, 74 is an inside joke. That's a long story about DePaul 2011. Well, I mean, we got the time. Let's hear it. <laughs> We got the time. <laughs> well, who needs the Beatles? All Seeger night. We got the time. Butt chide. I called you butt chide. I'm sorry. I, can't, I don't have my glasses on. Bert See, I'm sorry, those sure he's heard it his read. whole life. Yeah. <laughs> well, we just actually, yeah. we kind of refamiliarize ourselves with uh, Let It Be, the movie. Michael Lindsay Hogg directed, 1970 release. I just watched it last night. I watched it last week as well. And uh, I was all full disclosure. I fell asleep while watching it last night. I was tired too, and uh, maybe I had something to eat. I don't know. But you hate um, the Beatles too. This was like this is a work release thing. <laughs> <laughs> when my when Laura, my wife came in and, and I was sleeping, or I, I was I was actually awake when she woke up, and I, I the the movie was on my laptop on my lap, and I she said. Uh, <laughs> I said, I'm working. I'm working. And she's like, oh, do you snore when you work all the time? <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> Damn. Me. So, yeah, it's sad. And the pay, you know, so it's a movie that was, you know, shot in 69, January of 69, and then put together and released in, what was it, May of 1970? Whenever it was, 1970, let's say. It came Both the album and the movie came out middle of May. Album was May 8th. Okay. The movie was May 13th in the U.S. of 70. So pacing was a different thing. You know, things like Pee Wee's Big Adventure hadn't come out. MTV hadn't come out yet. So the pacing is from a different era. It's slower. And uh, that said, there is a lot. There are a lot of edits in it, but it's gloomy. It's a real gloomy movie. And I, I don't know if that's a combination of the of said pacing, but also like the quality we're watching these things on. It's not like HD at all. It's like bootleg quality it's a little fuzzy that sounds a little fuzzy there's a warmth about it though too like there's something about a a warm high hiss level that i find to be rather a blanket you know what i mean I, there's a coziness to that for me what do you think yeah i mean it's it, it's something that i've seen on and off many many times over the years i hadn't watched it in several years watching it again i didn't watch it again till till this morning and reminding myself of it when it opens with that Paul piano piece, I think that's been titled Paul's. I don't know if Paul, who named it. Maybe one of our fans knows Paul's piano piece that opens a movie, that kind of classical light thing. I don't know yeah. if Paul named it or was named that uh, after the fact, like Lewis or someone sad, named it though. that. It's, it's sad. sad. And Ringo <laughs> looks sullen at the top. Yeah. He's and just then sitting there. the first full band number that kicks in, there are, countless takes of don't let me down and the first band thing you see is the most sloppy out of tune take of one of their greatest songs so the first five minutes of the movie is already a a buzzkill it the it is the antithesis of the joy we saw in a hard day's night their first film so yeah. it does certainly improve but the Twickenham stuff on here is really hard culminates you don't see george leave you do see the george and paul issue following yeah. uh, uh uh when two of us breaks two down of us. yeah yeah with but, the hey jude like paul makes reference to hey jude which he thought george overplayed on hey jude and that sets off the i'll play what you play or i won't play at all the famous argument you know which is you know there's a lot of bands that have gotten into actual fisticuffs and this kind of a thing lee wow. quick lee says i'm so old i had let it be on laser disc i've in always 79 that is a dream of mine is to get a laser disc player and honestly got a copy of that and complete Beatles on laser disc in my mind. <laughs> they're in like 4k compared to my VHS <laughs> pressing. Wait, wait, wait. Fact there, check. There were a were laser, in, yeah. Were laser discs a thing in 1979? Yes. That's a good I question. They were. 
I believe really? they were. It was a late yeah. 70s format that I think went to the mid 80s or late 80s. I thought it was like cutting edge technology when my friend got like, uh, shoot, what's that one where Val Kilmer plays? Uh, uh, Top Secret. The Doors. <laughs> Damn it. No, no, no. The Western. The Western. <laughs> Come on. I'll be your Huckleberry. Oh. He's Doc oh. Holliday. Come on. Oh, uh, oh yeah. Dead, Deadwood. Not Deadwood. No, I, I know what you're talking about. It's Tombstone. Anyway, Tombstone. Tombstone. Right, right. What was Tombstone. that? 94? 93? That was about 93 or 94. Yeah. Yeah. Like, 94 I thought that on was VHS. cutting edge technology then when my buddy got that, but I could be correct. I could be wrong. You know, limited edition Laserdisc copies of that came out of Tombstone Pizza. <laughs> you, you, you could put it in the oven, cook up a Tombstone Pizza. Uh, Cloud Party Music, <laughs> watch it with a non Beatles fan, rented VHS in like 86. Yeah, the video is terrible. The video quality that I have it burned from is terrible too. Let's burn through a few more comments here. The two th <laughs> club party music. What does that mean? Yes. Oh, 2001. Yeah. He said, I feel like you're suggesting it's the, the 2001 of band movies. I just watched 2001, the Kubrick, oh, okay. right? And how slow paced it's, it's very slow paced and uh, there's no apes in it, but uh you know, unless you count Mal Evans' uh, anvil playing, I suppose. Bang, bang, which is, okay, Beatle fans, is Mal <laughs> Evans playing badly or did Michael Lindsay Hogg do him dirty? Because Mal Evans is behind the behind the beat in Maxwell's Silver Hammer. Yeah, he's like um, he's like 25% on beat. Like, I think he gets four, two, you know, four times two whacks at it. Like, four attempts to do the, the bang, bang. And each one, what, Casey, you... There you go. Yes. <laughs> Are you going to play just like starting over? I feel like that was the intro to <laughs> our life. Uh, by the way, um, I, because Casey got that wrong, I want to give him a buzz and say, correction. <laughs> Can I bring some of the podcast bits to this? Thank you. I legitimately learned that. I appreciate that, Bert. Uh, we, we, we did get some, yeah, Bert has uh, giving us some uh, laser disc history. They did come out in 77 as Disco Vision. I think we should fact check that and lasted until about 2000. And then they were rebranded in the nineties as a cinephile format for widescreen and digital sound. Remember that? Remember when, uh, pre canceled uh, R Kelly, I'm talking about, I'm not even sure if he's canceled, but you know what I mean? Like pre incarcerated. Okay, good. All right. Yeah. I'm not like pro any of his bullshit, but I remember he started making music videos in the letterbox format in like the mid nineties where he's like in a dry lake bed crying like, Oh, and I thought it was the most pretentious bullshit ever. I was like, what movie theater are they playing these stupid videos? At? <laughs> okay. Confirmed. Our Kelly get it out. Canceled. Okay. Here thank you, you. Chicago for real. He's it, been canceled. It makes space jam hard to watch for those of us who love spaceman. It's difficult. Uh, spaceman. Space, uh, space man, <laughs> space man three, good group. What's your favorite Michael Jordan David Bowie combo? It's space <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. so uh, you know when the movie starts out dreary, but it does end on a high note, and I feel like I'm anti, as you know, Tony. I'm anti Beatles revisionist history, and yeah, me I too. feel like uh, as much as I want the Peter Jackson movie to be amazing, I don't want it to kick the original Michael Lindsay Hogg, let it be to the curb. That movie, despite not being available, what it was around for roughly 15 years after the breakup and then disappeared. It was still part of Beatles canon for so long that you can't just forget. You know what? I worry that Apple's going to do. They're hmm. going to issue it in shitty quality because even anthology, if you watch, let it be in long and winding road, you could see you're a film guy. What do you call like when there's like almost like hair in the negative? Oh yeah, that's all over this film. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they call it, yeah, yeah. They didn't check the gate or whatever in the old days, so there would be a hair on the on the film that yeah would then go on to the transfer, and you'd see it, you know, all mm -hmm. that stuff. Yeah, it's like dirty, yeah, dirty old films that have been like in somebody's basement with water damage and this sort of a thing. I've seen some dirty old films. <laughs> St Beatles stag party <laughs> fab stags we, we, we came to watch yellow submarine why is he showing us his vacation in 1981 <laughs> this is in my Schneider phase <laughs> yeah man 
I will say this. So Michael Lindsay Hogg, he directed Rolling Stone's Rock and Roll Circus, right? And that was, uh, I'm just judging off of the Who's performance. Also Taj Mahal played. And of course, Dirty Mac, which was- uh, John and Yoko. John Yoko Dirty with Mac. Keith Richards. And uh, I want to say, it wasn't Ginger Baker the drummer on that? Or I mean, uh, Mitch Mitchell is what I meant uh, from Jimi Hendrix. And- uh, mm -hmm. So there were a lot of great performances. This, you know, the Stones were a little bit off because Brian was like in his about to get into the pool and all that. And uh, I just felt that there were a lot more dynamics with the Rock and Roll Circus. Like when you watch The Who doing a quick one on Rock and Roll Circus directed by Michael Lindsay Hogg, it's exciting. It's exciting. Like, you know, and the cameras are doing zooms here and there. But um, I didn't get that excitement so much. Maybe with the rooftop, finally. but. When you watch Anthology and there's a, a moment in uh, where Paul's talking about how you can take a camera and have it go all the way from the rafters on a crane and go all the way to right to Ringo's face or whatever. Like Paul had this vision that perhaps Michael Lindsay, I mean, he's talking about crazy stuff too. He's talking about like a lot like crazy crane moves and stuff like that. But it could have been that. You know what I mean? It could have been that. However, in Michael Lindsay Hogg's defense, uh, also in anthology, when you hear a lot of the discussions that they're having, and this comes all across in the Get Back, this is not the Get Back book. My copy of the Get Back oh, book came with yeah. a free sealed cut out of Ringo's bed. <laughs> Boy, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have heard the record. This is sealed, though, because I'm going to retire off this motherfucker. Uh, but <laughs> in, in the Beatles Get Back book, there, it's so much sarcasm and, and, and sour and even in the anthology, uh, Michael and Zimog, you hear him saying like, oh, uh, this would be the uh, the first time we get something. Like he's commenting on what a slog it is to get anything accomplished. So yeah, whatever true. the grand plans were, I think the Beatles were the biggest obstacle to Michael Lindsay Hogg. And thank God for the rooftop because it actually gave them an ending. What's interesting to me, Tony, generally, and we have other things to talk about too, Beatles-wise, but about the Let It Be movie, uh, do you think get back will the three parts will be twickenham savile row um rooftop will those be the neatly the three parts because twickenham i think only gets like 20 minutes or something in this movie are they going to give you two and a half hours of the kind of more bound depressing twickenham footage you know that would uh, i i hope not just for the sake of I hope I hope it stays chronological, but I hope that they do cut it up a little bit. There's something fun about Pulp Fiction or whatever and messing around with Memento, messing around with time. I also, you know, I don't know if I need to see two hours of rooftop. You know what I mean? Like that means six I, takes to get back. Or whatever. Yeah, right. Yeah. All four takes. I mean, it would be the complete rooftop. Complete. I don't right. think they're up there for two hours. So. Uh, you know, you can do all those interviews down on the streets, too. You can hear the, the woman like, this is rubbish. Or <laughs> I love it. The, Michael Lindsay Hogg, a great editing choice. The first guy they talk to, this older British guy uh, who yeah. talks about how much he loves. Like most of the comments are are, are very positive. It's cool. Yeah. I love the street stuff. I love hearing the audio on the street. It's so yeah. awesome to hear that. That's a great the echo. Yeah, the yeah echo. like the, the ghostly uh, beetle echo. Yeah, I know. I know that guy you're talking about. It's kind of the first person in the movie that they come up to. He's an older gent, and I can't understand what he's saying for the first half. And it sounds like he's against the Spake Beatles. Speak English. <laughs> yeah. Where yeah, do you, you live? <laughs> yeah, you guys are in America, man. In London, get with it. <laughs> That's my favorite Gershwin thing. <laughs> so this is interesting, Lee. They can't make the original "Let It Be" or you calling me a lib. <laughs> That's a problem with the abbreviation. I am, by the way. Uh, they can't yeah. make the original let it be any better than it was. Yeah, I mean, oh, or can they? And that's uh, Lee slash Tony slash everybody. I'm of two minds. I'm mm. breathless for the Peter Jackson doc, but not at the expense of the let it be movie. I think in a world where everything's got to be binary, why can't both things be super true? Yeah, right. Yeah, and also I, we need to get away from the binary thing. That's what's getting yes. us into all all of our problems. So can yeah, I jump in with a question? I'm curious to yes, know from your you experience, because I was watching, thank you, TJ, for helping hook us up with a little bit of a bootleg. Um, the audio oh, fuck, quality I'm gonna get really, arrested. Uh, I, I mean, I, I downloaded it myself illegally off the internet. <laughs> 
And the audio quality is a little challenging. Like, I don't know if it was just the bootleg quality, but the disparity between dialogue and music, I was constantly turning it up and down. And oh, like for me, even just the idea of getting to see any of that footage without having to like, I assume that all of that is going to be like clean to the max, totally contemporary technology mixed and mastered and beautiful sounding, right? Definitely. Yeah. Um, I Here's what I know. Like uh, I, from what we've read, like, Paul's hair will no longer just be a black block. You'll actually get to see every single fiber of his hair and his beard. So yeah, man, I can't wait. And you know what? I just actually, I, I bought a TV today. I bought a brand new TV. It's still in the box. Oh. Tony, I bought one last Sunday. Just in this. <laughs> Holy shit. I love that so much. I bought it. You guys TV are going too far. In years. <laughs> the Beatles are costing us our entire savings, our pension, yeah. it's all going yes. to the fab for thank you, Paul. <laughs> Fuck, I can't lift this. Oh, yeah. Between I, this and right Optimus, I mean, Jesus Christ. <laughs> this year, it's been 9,000. Oh, by the way, breaking Beatles news. Tony, give me your Beatles exclusive, please. Oh, uh, <laughs> boner <laughs> erection. <laughs> Beatles exclusive. <laughs> ejaculate <laughs> get it on your pants the um uh breaking news the uh, george harrison uber gnome box set was nominated for a grammy award today for best for best reissue so those of you who bought the thousand dollar gnome set not chomsky wow. you get animals um wound up uh got nominated for a grammy also breaking news paul mccartney's been nominated for two grammys mm. best rock song of the year for find my way parentheses feet back i don't know and also mccartney <laughs> 3 which sold 20 million copies okay. because he made 20 million different versions the pink <laughs> vinyl the yellow vinyl the green vinyl the like oh did, did you, you get it. the target one at newberry comics like no i don't need 20 copies how many times are you gonna listen to fucking long-tailed winter bird leave me alone <laughs> I like that you go to Target to buy the Newberry Comics <laughs> <laughs> version. It's, it's a that Boston makes sense. Target. It's, it's, it's Portsmouth name. Yeah, uh, that's hilarious, man. Well, yeah, and I, yeah. for other reasons, Dicky Zoom. I want to be very clear. <laughs> Well, I yeah, I really hope that Let It Be the movie survives. I hope it doesn't go the way of the complete Beatles and the Beatle cartoons and all those things that it's it feels like the whatever Apple organization is trying to kind of uh, evaporate, sweep under the rug. Like it's part of it. it. It happened. It's real. And I really hope that Peter Jackson's thing, you know, I'm. I don't need to see John throwing up in the bathroom from his heroin thing, but I also don't need that to be like, that didn't happen. You know, like he was, him and Yoko were smoking <laughs> fucking heroin uh, d during Twickenham, you know, and that happened. And I'm sure it wasn't caught on film or whatever, but I just, I would hate for this to become disneyfied you know that's our big that's my fear i'm one of those people that fears it's going to turn into they are actually going to turn into the beatles cartoons you know what i mean yeah well that's we've been joking on the show for a long time about <laughs> what is it? release the smack tapes release the smack tapes <laughs> smack yeah, tape, I'd be, yeah. on the floor. um <laughs> I, I, i'm not too worried about that actually tony because um <laughs> Peter Jackson is so good and like I, and as much as I loved eight days a week that Ron Howard doc like at some point you're like a ha hour and a half in and you just want to see them play in 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 France you want to see documentary footage yeah. of that and it's like here's Susan Sarandon on why right. she loved you know Beatles VI I had to right. give you a Beatles <laughs> VI for you every little thing um like I, I I think they're going to avoid all that before we move off of the actual film Tony I wanted to get your take on something <laughs> twickenham is 23 minutes john you mentioned is on on heroin and disinterested during a lot of twickenham the first 17 minutes of this john barely registers john really only comes in with across the universe i mean there's there's yeah. a great read of two of us but in terms of john songs john feels like an afterthought in so much of this film and i wondered watching this again today for the first time in a while if that's a reason yoko has been an advocate for keeping it off the market. That maybe that's a hmm. Yoko Olivia thing because hmm. neither 
George nor John come off looking particularly good in this. It feels Paul has bad moments too, but Paul is yeah. present throughout all this. Do you think that could have played a factor into this, that Yoko still not happy with how John's represented in the last Beatles movie? I mean, that's, yeah, that's a possibility. She seems very protective of him. I get that. Like he, you know, it's been 40 years since he's had a chance to do anything. So yeah, I suppose that's a factor, but I mean, it's all, it's just like anything, you know, it's like in the real world season two or whatever, if you're the bitch, you know, uh, in the move, in the, in the show, we're just showing you how, what you were like. George didn't want to do anything. And John was checked out. It was like Paul was the only one control freak, but out of necessity. And Ringo was like, I'll do whatever. You know, I, I, I just want to play. I just want to be in this band. He wanted to do the roof. And when there was a moment when it seemed like even Paul was like influenced by the, uh, you know, the. Uh, whatever the ambivalence towards going on the roof to do even a show to even do anything like what are we doing that existential thing they trap they fell into the quicksand well, Bi and billy preston wanted to do fiddler on the roof and auditioned <laughs> and there was a big racial thing they're like you can't be tev you billy and then billy got high um when when he comes into the film what a breath of like i'm be, uh, from hearing billy preston singing without a song on the on the box set and just again, seeing Billy's kind of keyboard solo before the Let It Be uh, bridge comes in. Uh, I'm I'm almost as excited to see how Billy Preston's represented in this film as I am the Beatles, because I feel like the joy that came into the these sessions was largely provided by Billy Preston's. Presence. Oh, yeah. And I, I can't I, I Apple just reissued encouraging words. I think his debut album for Apple. Let's get the covers of my sweet Lord. And I got a feeling and some other nice stuff on it. They just reached it on vinyl. I hadn't heard that album all the way through. Like Billy Preston, I feel like is in the sweet spot of underrated in terms of rock soul musicians. I, I know we had some big hits. Will it go around in circles? Nothing from nothing. But I feel like, yeah, is it like possible Billy Preston's not talked about enough? I hope this movie changes that. That and, and Sergeant Pepper, uh, the movie. Get back! <laughs> <laughs> Lee Quick Lee says, uh, I hope there's lots yeah. of Billy. He's great. Yeah, I mean, he it's really joy, is. Joy, joy. It's complete joy. Like, he really is a, a hero. Like, he did kind of, like, once he entered, uh, all the bullshit kind of went out the room and they had fun playing again. In fact, I heard Peter Jackson actually CGI'd, a, like, a, a cape on, on Billy when he comes in, like a hero's cape. <laughs> so you can look forward to that. <laughs> a lot of cgi that's it's gonna look great uh yeah and i think george lucas put one of those stupid monsters in the background too <laughs> Fuck, why is jar jar binks messing around with heather and ringo <laughs> ringo does such a great take when heather pounds on the drum that's such a great committee like you knew ringo would win an oscar for the magic christian or should have because yeah Ringo's acting was so great. John, when he sings Dig It with Heather there, John looks like he's going to kill her. John's <laughs> eyes, you're going to get it. Like, Well, geez. she's stealing Yoko's bit. You know, she's got the microphone like <laughs> halfway down her esophagus and she's wailing. And like, John's like, you know, well, you know, smack eyed like <laughs> that's my wife's bit. <laughs> Peter Jackson puts Heather Eastman on Bungalow Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Not when she looks so fierce. Um, yeah, I mean, there, uh. there's there, there's great moments. Uh, what I wonder, because Peter Jackson, last little thing in the movie, because we do have other stuff to talk about, but Peter Jackson talked about how they're not going to use any of the same Michael Lindsay Hug camera angles. Yeah. And yet, two of us I, I say why not but okay mm -hmm. uh, i say why not too and like what yeah. they call the performance day at apple at, at savile row um when they do two of us and long and winding road and let it be i think those are shot so beautifully those shots and the three shot of john ringo and paul doing don't let me down on the rooftop how do you not go with those those are iconic yeah I'm they really are stay yeah, yeah. I'm hoping that was just more of a guideline than like a hard rule. Yeah, because there's some great stuff in Let It Be. I, yeah, again, I hope it's I hope it survives. Uh, yeah, I'd love to see it all cleaned up too, but I don't think they had time for that. Some sounds like they're pretty busy with this uh, six hour plus extravaganza. 
here's where I have one problem with that, Tony, is uh, mm. apparently a guy, I'm going to get his name wrong, Beetle Nerds, help me out here, Ron Fermanick or Ron Fermanick remastered a bunch of stuff around anthology, and in the early 90s, apparently, he prepared a remaster of the Let It Be film that's kind of sat in the archives. I think really? that's what they used for anthology. But that even me, Peter Jackson, certainly the folks at, at, at Apple and the surviving Beatles and whatever, you know, Apple's now 20 million people, uh, Jeff Jones running it, um, who came over after Neil Aspinall uh, died. Um, so you would think Let It Be wouldn't just be a let's get it out now thing that in the last 15, 20 years, they would have remastered it and, and, and retouched it so they'd have a better print from which to work. Um I'm still disappointed, as we talked about the, on the show, that the Let It Be box set, that would have been the time, Tony, to put the DVD of the Let It Be movie in. There was no reason not to. Uh, you know, you, you have an EP with a shitty sounding Glenn Johns <laughs> produced I Me Mine. Like, yeah, you you're right. Put the Let It Be movie in? It's not your record player. It's the mix. That That's such a funny mix. I like, I like, yeah. I don't, I don't, I, that was a curious. It's curious that they didn't clean it up, but I also get it. I, they're keeping it true. You know, maybe that maybe that reel had damage on it. Maybe that's what it is. And they just didn't want to they couldn't go in and redo the Glyn Johns mix on it. They just had to take it as is. That's the only reason I can think that the I mean, my 1970 Glyn Johns mix sounds so muddy and yeah, scarred. And that's why they only had two songs on a side for an EP and a hundred ninety dollar vinyl box set anyway. Thank you, Beatles. We love you, Beatles. Oh, yes, we do. <laughs> every once in a while. Should we get to our friend Terry here? Any other closing thoughts it. on yeah. Let It Be, Tony? The film itself, having the experience. And we will do a deep dish on this movie right after we get to our bad boy deep dish, which is coming. <laughs> uh, Tony's going to do it by, by his, his Next. lonesome. Um, <laughs> But, uh, you know, any other on kind of horseback. thoughts about... <laughs> I'm going to do the first horseback podcast about the Beatles. Get ready. You'll, you'll, <laughs> Put the on your spurs. Is, is Linda McCartney's Wild Prairie will be playing in the back. Um, Definitely. Do you, uh, do you have any parting thoughts? Like, is this a movie that if it were cleaned up or reissued, you'd go back and watch a bunch? I would watch it occasionally. I'd watch it as much as I'd watch the anthology, which I do. I do on occasion because I love. I love. I love anthology. I think anthology is so great. Um, yeah, I would. I would. But it is. Yeah, it's. A, it is a bummer. It's a bummer. It's. Uh, I hope you'll forgive me on this. It's like no, I won't say it. <laughs> I can't. Say oh boy, it. <laughs> were you going to say Schindler's List? I was. I can't do that. I can't. Do that. George Martin playing the Shakers, like the little red girl in the red coat in the sewer. Yeah. Stay tuned next for Shalom Chicago. It's next <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, there you go. There, you that's, I was just here. trying to get a plug for you. That's all. <laughs> we're, we're bad plug, but uh, hey. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, bad boy. Bad boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a sealed copy. Get <laughs> jealous, motherfuckers. I'm retiring off this bitch. Hype sticker. Hole Punch, we talk cutouts a lot. This album, I've heard it, never opened it. That's <laughs> Club, how records work. Club that sealed bad boy, right? That's a <laughs> weird Al thing. All right. We decide. So we're going to Siskel and Ebert, uh, the the Breakfast with the Beatles playlist. Now, this is the, the XRT Breakfast with the Beatles, not the uh, XM radio, eh? Yeah, um, Chris Carter, Clance Carter, Clance Carter, woo <laughs> shit, Clance Carter is my favorite line in maybe any song ever. <laughs> God bless you, Norwegian. I have that. I have that seven inch. <laughs> That's yeah, forty five. <laughs> forty five. We'll call it a forty five. No, I had that. I had Clarence Car Stroking, right? Stroking, Clarence Carter. Great song. <laughs> That's what I be doing. Um, <laughs> but in Chicago, we have a legendary DJ named Terry Hammered who's been on a station. It's like the alt rock station. It used to be alternative. Now it's kind of like, oh, they're going to play the Lumineers followed by the police. It's kind of become that uh, pr yeah. uh, programmed, uh, you know, alternative. Um, but still I still love it. Still yeah. beloved. And Terry Hammered's like the most famous DJ. Well, I'll just put like Lynn Bramer, but Terry Hammered is the icon of icons. Terry Hammered has also been the MC for Beatlefest since I was a kid, since the early 80s. So she's a Beatles expert, like one of the country's preeminent Beatles experts. Now everybody can hear Terry Hammered. I actually created a little thing for this. 
everybody Ooh. can hear Terry Hemmert um, on the Odyssey app, 93 XRT. I'm typing the point nine, but 93 XRT every Sunday, 8 to 10 Central. Part of loving Terry Hammer, like loving, like part of loving America is being critical of America, right? That's okay. Part of mm-hmm. loving Terry Hammer is being critical of her playlist. Like, is she takes a lot of requests? Like, why is Terry going to play? Oh, this is the <laughs> this is a wonderful cover of uh, the the Smiths doing Rain. No, no, it's not wonderful. <laughs> I don't know who asked for it. Um, but so Tony and I have decided we're going to review her set list every week. TJ, before we go lobbing uh, bombs at Terry Hemmert, I just need to fact check that banner that you brought up. This what week's Breakfast with the Beatles. Let's see if I can show it while I'm here. Yeah, it's 93.9 light FM. Oh, that, oh that fuck, that's you? the light. I'm at 93.1. Light <laughs> yeah, FM. They're, they're playing, they've been playing Christmas music since like October 12th. It's beginning to look a lot like Beatles. Breakfast everywhere. Terry Hammer comes on every Saturday. She just plays War is Over on a loop. <laughs> War is Over, Ding Dong, and uh, the Paul one. Oh, okay, that's sorry, a wonderful. We got Thanks. A wonderful... No, I... I... Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> we got a wonderful request of Julian Lennon doing Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. No, Terry, don't play it. Sorry. It's, <laughs> thanks for the correction. <laughs> so 93.1 XRT to be uh, okay. clear. <laughs> well, do you want to go over the whole thing? I mean, it, yeah, you seem to enjoy it. I thought it, it looked. Here's what I'll say. I love the eclecticity. Is that the word? Uh, it's eclectic, man. There you go, ninety three point one XRT. It. Thanks, Casey, <laughs> riding that train. Um, yeah, I mean, I I, I listen, I listen all, almost every week. It's hard because I got a five and a half year old, and sometimes I can't quite pay as close attention as I'd like. But I listen. I uh, do you want to? How do you want to do mm-hmm. this? This is our. Let's our, blast through it. Let's let's just like yeah. zap through it, right? Let's zip through it. She so she starts off with a banger, right? Sergeant Pepper with into little with a uh, into little. Oh my God! Sergeant into Pepper with into, a I, I got you, Sergeant Pepper into Little Wing, and Stevie Ray Vaughan's <laughs> cover of that is probably the best. <laughs> no offense, Jimmy. I mean, um, it's an yeah. instrumental, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sergeant Pepper into with a little help from my friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, iconic, universally popular. I get it. It's eight in the morning. Not, you know, it kind of rocks and then it kind of like eases in. Good, good choice. Great choice. It's a great top of the hour. Don't you think? Classic <laughs> opening. Can't miss. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, 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 Bird Chide, it, it ain't been round since you know when. Um, yeah. It, 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 <laughs> oh, it's, yeah. It's a great, it's a great opening number. Again. Yeah. Uh, uh, obviously, the opening from Pepper is great. Then she in the in the two hole. I know I, I get baseball when we ooh, talk like ooh. this. Uh, that always sounds the- different to me. <laughs> <laughs> two hole, poo two hole. We'll be different. right back. Yeah. That's I hate like how a, pool holes. <laughs> that's an Upper Peninsula joke. That's like a <laughs> De Youpers joke or something. But yeah, anyway, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, she she goes into poor little girl. Little trivia here. You know I love this stuff. Yeah. You could not download or purchase poor little girl. It was only made available on I think it was 89's um, Best of Dark Horse. That yeah. cockamamie business were recorded just for that compilation. Never on CD after that. Not downloadable. So good for Terry for playing a great late 80s George Harrison song in the second spot. I, you never hear that in the radio. That was a gift to hear no. that. Yeah, so that is, that's cool. So thumbs up on that. We'll say five fabs on that. Poor five little fab. girl. George Harrison. It was recorded July of 1989. He was kind of like he was into the Wilburys thing. But the other Will Berries were busy, so he knocked out a couple numbers until, you know, schedules collided. Uh, Roy, Cohen, Roy, Roy Orbison you know. was busy. He was dead. <laughs> That's how busy he was, man. Yeah, man. So it takes a lot to be dead, man. You got to <laughs> just, like, stand there. Uh, <laughs> lay there, depending on Lay your there. Mind. Yeah, it depends. So, yeah. I, you know, I'm going to die standing up because I'm a cowboy. <laughs> yeah, I want to be a cowboy and you can be my cowgirl. Uh, then it goes into another obscurity. Do you want to know a secret? Take seven. Yeah. So this is from those 1963 uh, bootleg recordings that iTunes only release uh, back yeah. in 
2013, I Would guess, right? Yeah, because yeah, it yeah. was released to deal with the 50 year copyright issues in England. With the trivia about that is we thought there'd be every year. Yeah. When the copyright expired, another 50th thing. I don't know what happened. I would love to get Jeff Jones in a room and <laughs> ask him that. <laughs> Let me, hey, you know what I'm talking about? What kind of lighting um, do you want for that? <laughs> I want software. I want to tell what it would take to get the Beatles cartoons on <laughs> Blu-ray. Um, but no, the first question I'd ask him is, wh- for real, why did that stop after 63? Dylan did it up for almost every year. What happened? Yeah, he's put everything out. Like you can listen to every take of whatever, you know. Yeah. One uh, headlight, the only difference. <laughs> One, two, yeah. three, Marlena's. Are we talking the same guy? Mm-hmm. Definitely. <laughs> how, how many Wallflower songs deep can TJ go to see quick exercise? Yeah, I used to work radio. I can only name like the two hits. Sixth Avenue, Heartache. That's, that's, the, that's the other one. one I know, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, then to me, then she goes into a, a, In My Life by Ed Sheeran. That's where I say, no, thank you. I yeah, can do sorry, without Jerry. this one. Zero fabs. Although I, she does that for the kids. I, sure. I, I, I mean, if, and if you close your eyes, Ed Sheeran is Tracy Chapman. Right. No, I, I can't wait. I love being in a coffee house. It's great. <laughs> With an overly earnest singer, you know, distracting me while I'm trying to do what I'm trying to do at the coffee house. But no, Ed Sheeran's great. I'm, I'm glad you love him. I like being in a coffee house with an overly earnest goes to camp singer. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't Ernest do a Beatles movie? That would have been the best. <laughs> <laughs> Ernest joins the Beatles. <laughs> John Paul George and Ernest. <laughs> What was his catchphrase? Right. What was Ernest's right. catchphrase? The Do Beatles. You know? will, uh, I was like, "Hey Vern" or whatever, hey, something Vern. like that. <laughs> something about Vern or whatever. Because <laughs> he started doing like commercials, like lo- local commercials. But like, yeah. Anyway, Jim right. Varney, and then he got like buff, like Carrot Top. He got all buff. Like, there's those later Ernest movies. He's all buff. It's weird, man. It's awkward. <laughs> Jim Varney <laughs> is the sixth Beatle. That's what they should have done. Ernest reunites the Beatles in the nineties, like he does John. That would have solved everything. <laughs> All right, then we go into "Till There Was You." Sure, why not? Yeah. Uh, to, to now we have a, two in a row with zero fabs here. Like this is Terry having had Lumalnati's the night before and needing <laughs> nine minutes just to take a stinker. <laughs> These are the two two worst songs from arguably two of the worst records in the respect oh. nobody ever wants to hear a anything from Dark Horse. And oh, B, that's just no. so sad. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna. I, I like George. I like Dark Dark Horse. I I I'm gonna Dark argue. We're, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna deep dish Dark Horse. I'm gonna defend it. It's okay. gonna be good. Right. I actually like Dark Horse more than the album uh, Living in the Material World. I actually prefer wow. it. Oh wow, yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You're you're you're, you're a big fan of Simply Shady apparently. I I am. I like that I song. It's all right. <laughs> but that's also now two George solo songs. All right. So that yeah, one's all right, cool. but I mean I will say after Ed Sheeran and then Till There Was You, George Harrison's so sad. It's like we need something with a little more. I know it's 8 in the morning, but we need something with a little more pep. So I'll I'll give you on the context that this song is kind of like uh then it goes into the fireman, you know, yeah. which is Paul's, uh, <laughs> is Paul being Moby <laughs> <laughs> and a song called traveling light, which is like so sleepy. Like, do you want people to f- crash off the Edens or whatever? <laughs> 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 no billboards. And then this song, on, I got nothing to like, <laughs> fall asleep. Oh, they closed Carson Perry Scott. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's bad. I mean, and there's some good songs on Electric Arguments. I mean, uh, the the kind of blue let it shine on. Uh, there, there's he he's got a couple. That's a couple Collective Soul. The... <laughs> <laughs> Ninety four uh, Collective Soul. I always get Collective Soul and McCartney's Youth collaborations <laughs> fucked up. It's it's a thing I, I do. <laughs> but yeah, and and then and this is so weird because then right to Penny Lane, like my son's yeah. ears perk up because he loves that song. I love Penny Lane. Great I, song. There's a weird Strawberry Fields Penny Lane competition because it's two sides of a 45. I love them both. I think, I'm team, I think I'm team. I think I'm team Penny Lane, but I'm team mm. Penny Lane with the extra trumpet tag. <laughs> right, the the promo. 
only. <laughs> Pro yeah. only. If you could well, find as a you copy know, of rarities. I'm I'm Team Strawberry Fields. You know that, and that's that's how we that's how we do it. That's how we that's do it. That's just how it works. We are the odd couple. And then he goes into George Martin's take from the U.S. Hard Day's Night soundtrack of I should have done better, which is great. Five fabs five fabs to a u.s uh not u.s capital united artists uh, united artists. uh record i love it yeah it's the instrumental version it sounds like the version that the brady bunch listens to when they listen to music on their transistor <laughs> radio like <laughs> that like weird <laughs> production music they listen to <laughs> lee quickly defends me and says dark horse is a good song thank you thank you and even has a horse a, a, a thing on there <laughs> it's a great one too emoji party. yes <laughs> Collective Soul should have put out an album called Asylum. They're, you're completely right. That's a great hit, I'm sure. Cloud Party, that was a great band, too. Remember them in the 80, late 80s? Yeah. They were like the next Beatles. The World Party is what I'm thinking of. Uh, then World we Party. get into uh, Paul coming up live in Glasgow, the, the American single version, or the, ah. the version that came, the seven inch that came with the McCartney 2. It's even weirder. She didn't play the original Columbia single. She played the version that was put on the McCartney to reissue that features oh. the extra verse, which was weird. Like oh. that's another McCartney that's been lost in the mists of time. The Columbia single issue of live at Glasgow is not found anywhere. It was on that Columbia, even on uh, what, uh, on what was it called? Hits in history. Oh, fuck me. Wingspan <laughs> wingspan in 2000. <laughs> didn't even they use an ed, and even all the best use edited versions of that original Columbia single still can't find it digitally anywhere but she used the version from the McCartney 2 box from 20 whatever 2010 2011 it's it's a great song like i mean you you almost forget that coming up is one of Paul's best songs i think i love that tune it's a good song yeah it encouraged john to work again allegedly. yeah that's true there you go for that you're yeah completely yeah uh, then we get two from John in a row, slipping and sliding. Okay, rock and roll. Yeah. And then Dig a Pony Take 14, which is, you know, brand new and fresh for us off the new Let It Be reissue. Pretty cool. It's the smoother uh, studio version because they use the rooftop version on the all the, the records. Yeah. Stevie Wonder, your favorite. We can work it out. My favorite Beatles cover. I love it so much. Yeah. And Terry was at the Gershwin Award where Paul McCartney was honored by President Obama, Terry Hemmert was there with her sister. So she talked about that in the air, having the special connection. Five fabs for that, Terry. That's cool. It closes the hour with If I Needed Someone. So we got a lot of George in the 8 o'clock hour. Uh, opening up with the mono version of Here, There, and Everywhere at 9 a.m. So great. yeah, give some fabs for that. Then the reggae version of Help by uh, Gamba Jabari. I think that's how you say that. Not a good one. <laughs> great great chicago uh basketball player from simeon that's a deep <laughs> cut um yeah not a huge fan of this one yeah but it's only like two and a half minutes so you know it's not like the firemen or whatever so uh every little thing great song great deep cut probably one of their best deep cuts don't you think what album is it from it's one of my favorites <laughs> beatles vi <laughs> beatles vi my man <laughs> or beatles six if you know you know <laughs> if you hate america do another you know there? <laughs> I do well uh dizzy miss lizzie uh so another john rock and roll. so we got a lot of rock and roll john but that will be oh and then here we go then back to back beatles vi by the way oh yeah you're right yeah nice man so it should be v i i all right now the controversial so here's where she like is terry a, a troll or is she a fan i can't tell Live from the pound, love me do. So this is dogs barking, love me do. It is the woofers and tweeters who may be a part of one of our upcoming episodes that I've had the chance to edit. The woofers and tweeters. It's a fun album. It is way fun if you love to smoke a lot of pot in your twenties. <laughs> I think 30s. it's a, it's a it's a weird move, man. But I'm into it. I suppose. Sure. <laughs> Uh, my favorite, one of my favorite John Lennon solo songs, whatever gets you through the night. Thank you. Great after one. the Beatle thing, cry for the mm -hmm. a shadow, my favorite Beatles instrumental. And what well, the only, what is it? It's a McCartney Harrison composition. Or is cry for a shadow Harrison Lennon. Or is it Harrison Lennon? I forget. Now. I'm sorry. Help man, us. 
Speedo fans <laughs> watching now, I'm forgetting <laughs> that if you have a copy of Tony Sheridan of the Beat Brothers handy, let me know. <laughs> uh, well, some people think flying's better. I, I, I see you. You're seen. Fresh Ante. <laughs> I see you. You see me. <laughs> That's coming up. Um, are we We're running out movies? of time. Yeah. The Get Back 2021 remix, which is great. Yes. George Harrison, totally. John Lennon yes, is Harrison the Lennon. You're right. cry for a shadow. Uh, Ringo's Don't Come Easy from Bangladesh. Uh, we skipped we over XC Sexy Stadium. Stadium. I think. Yeah. Great song. Yeah. Which gets John out of the rock and roll prison that he was in on this BW Breakfast with the Beatles. <laughs> Ringo's uh, Bangladesh version where he kind of slurs through some of the, the, <laughs> the lyrics. <laughs> Uh, Beck Get covering off, and oh, tomorrow. Oh, Ringo. We have uh, Beck covering Wawa. It's a quicker. Hmm. It's busier. The drummer's very uh, good. I want to say, is that Warrenker? Is that that kid Warrenker on drums? Joey? Maybe. Um, it's all right. It's all right. I think I prefer the original. Paul's Mumbo. I love anything from Wildlife. I was listening and right. In, I love Wildlife too. Right when you hear, take it, Tony. I got so excited. <laughs> no, I, I don't mind flying. I'm not shitting on flying. I'm just saying I that like cry them. for a shadow. I'm responding to comments here. Uh, I just think that I, my favorite instrumental is cry for a shadow. That's all. I like flying. Uh, John's extended take of uh, I found out take three. It's five and a half minutes with the blues licks in there and all that. And Ringo fucking up. Yeah, there's a little. Yeah, he misses a beat. Yeah, 12 bar original. Someone's <laughs> who said that? <laughs> Cloud party. <laughs> them doing green onions, kind of. Uh, right. And then, uh, yeah. The and then it closes with to BD Records from the Sgt. Pepper film. <laughs> We're, for those of you listening to our podcast, we are uh, responding to comments seen on the screen at times. Uh, and then Terry closed it out with great uh, a great energetic closer paperback writer. So I overall, I mean, I love the eclecticity. If that's a word, I'm going to give it an overall. Uh, I'm going to say four fabs for this one. Four fabs. Yeah. I'm going to hot start sagged in the middle. I'm going to say three and a half fabs for this. And Tony, with wow. that, we have to run. Um, we are going to be back here. Thank you. Everybody who's tuned in. A lot of loyal fans of the podcast. It's what an honor to have you all join us. We are, want to reiterate, right here, 9 p.m. Central, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Tony and I are going to go over each day's new Get Back documentary on Disney+. Plus. It is Christmas, Hanukkah, and the Super Bowl over three days, and I can't wait. <laughs> and the Monterey Pop Festival. <laughs> and the Monterey Mom and Pop Festival. Um, Tony, any closing words is Find My Way, the best rock song of the last year. No, thank you, Casey Baker, our producer. Thank you all for watching, listening, and uh, yeah, we'll see you soon. Stay tuned. Next, if you want to hear me talk Jewish stuff for an hour and a half with my dear friend and business partner, Katie Klein, Shalom Chicago is next, then Hoops for Real at 8.30 Central, an all-basketball show, Tony Mendoza, Casey Baker, thank you. I'm TJ Shanoff. This has been Twitch and Shout. We'll see you soon, everybody. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Untitled Beatles podcast. Like and subscribe.